one that I want to talk about today, the one why we're all gathered here and you're listening to me speak, is this thing called groups. It's a simple word, right? Groups. But it does so much, so many complex things that you may not realize you needed, but maybe always kind of deeply wanted, and you just didn't know that it was possible to get. Right now, we have this giant list, right? Like, that's what everyone has. It's like, log in and you see all my leads. Why? Why do you need to see 10,000 of my leads that are either partly, mostly probably coded out or don't pertain to what I want you to do? And not only that, but why do closers need to see follow-up leads? Why do people we just hired need to see all of our leads when we really don't even know them or trust them yet to see our leads? We're able to take our leads and put them into groups. And not only just putting our leads into groups, right? Creating these buckets per se, we're allowed to put our agents in groups as well, where one agent can't see leads in another group and another agent can't see leads in their group. And they, there's no crossover. So if you take a look right here, follow specialist cleaners and closers. And then you got my opportunities, which is just like it sounds, it's my bucket. And then we have all opportunities because this is a, although it's a demo account, it's a manager account. So only managers get to see all opportunities. But the cool thing is you can do anything you want. Um, maybe you want, you don't want to run it like me. And you say, Brandon, um, I want to be able to separate by market. So I want to have two of my agents working the Florida market because I want them to be very familiar with Miami and Orlando. But then I want another guy working the Dallas market. And I want another guy just working Philly. And you can do that. You can make sure that the Philly guy never sees a Miami lead and he just becomes a freaking pro at knowing the difference between all the different neighborhoods in Philadelphia because it's an urban market versus Miami. Or maybe you want to do it by marketing channel. How about that? Maybe you want your A team on your PPC leads and maybe you want the new guys that you're training still to be on your RVMs because we all know RVMs are, well, of a lower quality type of lead. And you don't want your new guys to be on your PPC leads. So let me show you this. So I got my guy, Tony, over here, right? Now, Tony's just a closer. Tony doesn't have the right to see my other leads. So as you can see, Tony, he only gets to see two leads. But actually, if you see here, there's five leads in the closers. The thing is, is that Tony only gets to see the two that are available for him to take, right? So if Tony wants, he can come in here and he can click on a lead and he is able to actually take, and click it, take ownership with this button. And this is the cool thing. So he looks here, he maybe pops open the notes, you know, reads the notes, there's no notes, but let's just, oh, this is a hot lead. Let me check this out. He comes here, he takes ownership of it. It immediately assigns him that action. And it, what it does is, let me go back here, it takes it out of that bucket and puts it into his opportunity buckets now. So now Tony has these leads and they're not available for anybody else. So the question you guys may be asking is like, how do we set these groups up? How easy is that? First, I just want to say this. Although everything I'm going over, you can set up any way you want. We all know that Investor Fuse has phenomenal white glove onboarding. So although I have had time to play with this and work with this for a while, they will do it all for you. They will, you tell them how you want to set your company up. They'll set you up in groups. They'll make sure everyone's assigned properly. They'll migrate your leads over. So that way, if you already are an existing member and you want to separate out your leads, they will help you. I want to create a group. It's pretty simple. I come here, add new group. Um, let's call this the really hot leads because that's the good stuff. All right. Really hot leads. I come here and I pick what, what ones I want. Let's, uh, I hear Brandon's pretty cool. Let's add John's a good guy. Let's give John access to these and my guy, Tony Stark. So I give Tony access. So now these are the only people with access to really hot leads. And I'm going to show you something. Look what happened real quick to Tony's page. All of a sudden he now has access to this group and none of the other ones but just now closers and really hot leads because that's what I assigned it. Automatic releasing of opportunities. But we want to make sure that when somebody says they're going to call them on a Tuesday, 
they call them on Tuesday. And if they don't pick up with them, they call them the next day. Because if not, somebody else has to call them. But the problem is, is when somebody assigns themselves a lead, not just here, but like even in Podio, when we were in Podio, we had a rule, like you can't steal other people's leads. And the thing is, is what happens when somebody comes here and let's say automatic releasing. I want to say 15 days after somebody's task is due, if they have not done the task, they lose the lead. It automatically gets released. Because what happens if they say, I'm going to call it Tuesday. Tuesday comes and goes and they ignore that lead. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, three weeks later, they still haven't touched it. Well, rightfully so, that lead should be released back to the group so somebody with time or somebody more motivated to make money can go after that lead. This is sales. And in any real sales organization, you either work your leads or you lose your leads because those are the company's leads, not your leads. And so that's what this helps with, hoarding of leads. So automatic releasing does help this problem some, but it doesn't truly solve the problem of hey man, like you can only work so many leads. There was a time where I had one acquisition agent, he was notorious for grabbing leads. And I looked in his pipeline at one time when I organized it, because it wasn't easy in my old CR. <laughs> I was like, dude, you got like, and I forget what it was. It was like close to 400 freaking leads. And guess what? They weren't being worked, but none of my other agents were touching them because he was assigned to them. And so he was hoarding these leads and that cost me money opportunity limits. I read a book once that said a person, a salesperson on average can only manage effectively and remember properly about 150 contacts networking. So, and how would that work, right? So let's come over here. Tony's got one lead, but Tony's hungry. And he's like, man, you know, see this, I didn't work it. I don't really feel like it. Like, I don't want to call this new lead. It doesn't really look motivated. Let me come over here and I'll just get another lead. I'll let that one sit. And Tony comes over here and Tony's like, I want to take ownership of this lead. So now it says, no, Tony, you cannot take more than your allotted amount. Tony, you already have two active opportunities assigned to you and you are over your limit. Your boss said that you can only have one. So now what does Tony do? If Tony wants to take a new lead because Tony's a hoarder, Tony has to get rid of something. So what he would have to do then is he would have to come back into his opportunities and he would have to release some leads. And he's got to decide what ones he wants to release in order to get new ones. And that's what I think is really cool because it solves a major problem about our leads that we pay for being hoarded by another agent. By, well, not just another agent, but by an acquisition person on our team. And we hire them specifically to make money. And I know personally, and I'm sure as other team leaders out there and people who started their business doing acquisitions themselves, you can't rule any lead out. Even the most stubborn seller over time can become a yes. You have the ability to decide every campaign or channel that you create, you have the right and ability to decide where you send it. Okay. So maybe you want to send it like, I want to send this one to John because John's, John's a stud on bandit signs, he closes them all, and that's fine, all right? We all know that that's always been a feature. But what I'm talking about is clicking this button, and then this happened. So now I'm allowed to assign a lead to a group, so everything that comes from bandit signs, everything that comes from cold calling or PPC or whatever it is you want, you get to pick where it goes based on how you set your groups up. So if this was a Dallas bandit sign campaign, and I wanna make my groups by market, well, guess what? I would assign it to the Dallas group. Or this is bandit sign, so I want it to go to, they're really hot leads, right? I'll call them, this is gonna to go to the really hot lead group. And then from here, I get the right to pick how I want them to work. Do I want them to round robin, where it starts and circles around everybody in the group, giving them all a chance? Or me personally, I just like to leave them in the bucket, right? Like right here, like these are all in my bucket and the leads get dropped in, the agents come in, take ownership of a lead, it moves into their pipeline and they work that when they're done working it, they go grab another one and they keep doing that throughout the day. That's how I like to do it. 
So if you're thinking, Brandon, this is all well and good, but maybe I don't want to do that. I want my acquisition people to see everything. Okay, that's your call. You want them to see leads that don't pertain to them. Again, investor fuse thought of that. But I say, Tony, you're allowed to see all the leads, bro. That's totally okay. If you want to see them all, I accept that. And what that's going to do, actually, is that is going to give him the ability to now create that all opportunities. And let me slide it over and show you. Now, Tony has all opportunities. The all-in-one systems are, are done. I need something catering to risk management, mitigation, right? Like every business other than our business finds the software best for that department. And I mean, I've had other jobs before real estate and there was no company I worked at that was like, hey man, I'm gonna have my billing department, I'm sales software, my sales guys are working on the same platform, my engineering guys, and well, product development is working on the same software as the accountants. That doesn't happen. Every department, every department head is in charge of finding the software that gives their team the best way to either increase efficiency or increase profit. And that's why I switched. And once I met, I mean, John said, I, we've known each other for multiple years now, and it wasn't easy. Me and him talked many times. And once I got my hand on this system, that was it, man. That was it. Not only did I mitigate my risk because yes, I have had the horror stories I could tell you for days of leads and deals getting stolen, people having access to leads and exporting them and all kinds of things where I would lose money. And no other system gives me this ability in allowing me to pick and choose how I want to do it.